so glad you could join. So what I'm working on here is my collaboration soap with Renee. This, that mold I just showed you, is a, a shot glass mold. This is my sweet potato puree, which I have frozen and I have sitting in an ice bath. And I'm going to be adding my lye directly to that frozen disc there um, and stirring it up until it's melted. As I've shown you all before, I oftentimes will add a bit of natural color. So I'm adding two very small uh, scoops of tomato powder to my lye water, I mean to my oils here. The reason for that is because, well again, sweet potato is a natural ingredient. Many times natural ingredients eventually start to turn brown in your soaps. So if you give them a little boost of color with a powdered natural ingredient like tomato powder, it will hold its color much longer. And I have found, at least in a few examples, of those colors staying for six months and longer. So, as you may know, that's quite impressive. <laughs> so I'm just using my little mini mixer here, my little frother, to mix that tomato powder into my oils. I just wanted to make sure that they absorb some of that oil before I added in my lye water. And now it's time to mix it all together and get this stuff going. I have to tell you, this is always exciting to me because even though you know oftentimes what the result will be, or at least you hope, <laughs> there are so many surprises and variables like using sweet potato. I've not used this particular ingredient. I've used carrot like you just saw me do. Um, but sweet potato, not one of uh, the items that I've used, so I'm really excited to use this. And I am going to put a link uh, throughout the video here to Renee's channel, and I really hope that you'll visit hers and take a look at what she's done. I haven't seen it yet myself, so I'm really excited. We have both arranged for our videos to be uploaded at 5 a.m. on uh, Thursday. So I'll see hers when she sees mine. Well, if I'm up that early. <laughs> now, I myself am somewhat allergic to fragrance oils, but I do have some. Um, and since there is no true sweet potato essential oil, <laughs> I used a pumpkin and brown sugar uh, fragrance oil that I have from Brambleberry in this. I just thought that would be a nice complimentary smell. And since I'm doing this in sort of a dessert type of soap mold, uh, or at least that's my take on it, um, I thought that would be a really good scent for it. And I hope you'll agree. Unlike most any soap that I do, I completely did this with a whisk. I didn't even put the stick blender on it. I just wanted this to be the perfect consistency, and the only way I can truly monitor that, me, <laughs> is with a whisk. Because I can feel any resistance, and I know immediately when it's hit trace. And Any of us that have done this for a while have that experience. I tried to be very clean with my pores here, but as it's me doing this, there were a couple little drips, but they wiped right up. <laughs> Nothing too bad. And what's great is I actually guessed the, the um, mount almost perfectly, which is unusual for me. So this is about 12 hours later, and I'm just removing it from the molds now. And this was a new experience, not using a mold like this, but it's very easy, as I'll show you. So you just press them out into the hole with your thumb or forefinger, whatever works for you. 
Then you get a good grip on your soap. Don't just pull, but kind of loosen it up on the inside, and then it slips right out, and there's your perfect little column. Pretty nice, huh? I really like these. Overall, I was very pleased with how these came out. Um, and if I didn't mention, I did put these in the freezer for just about 30 minutes just to make them easier to unmold. But they came out just fantastic. I was so happy. So next, I'm going to make my filling for my little shot glasses there. And this is some goat's milk, which I have in an ice bath and the usual adding the lye until it's melted. And I won't bore you with all that. And because I wanted this to look like a buttery kind of a custard, I put some TD into my lye water here before, or my lye milk, I should say. Um, I just wanted to have it nice and creamy white. So just a yellow tinge. And because I wanted this to be thicker, because I'm going to use it for piping into the uh, shot glasses, I wanted it to be, you know, nice and firm. Now, I'm going to tell you now that it came out too firm, as you'll see here in just a moment. I had high hopes, but I did a water reduction because I wanted it to be thick. I added TD, which we know can thicken it, and I over stick blended it. So it, this first bit is pretty much unworkable. I did manage to get it stuffed down in the piping bag, but as you'll see here, I can't even squeeze it out. I am pressing as hard as I can and it just won't come out. It has already turned solid in the bag, or almost solid. I mean, I do manage to get a tiny bit out, but the bag actually, I was, well, it didn't burst, but I was so afraid it was going to. It was just a disaster. It was hard as a rock. So I came up with another idea. I took it out of the bag <laughs> and I started rolling it into small cylinders in my hand and just stuffing into these. And I've done four here, but I'll show you um, some of the others as I did them. But this was just to get them filled. There was no way I was going to do any pretty piping with this stuff. But it works great for filling this with good solid soap. So what I did is I just um, put it in my hands and rolled it between my gloves and formed kind of a little cylinder and I just kept rolling it and rolling it until I got a nice tight cylinder. Then I would press it down inside and then cake it in, you know, by pressing and pressing and just cake, pushing. And I will tell you that one of these actually pushed a little hard and cracked the side and you'll see that here in a moment, but this worked at least to get them filled. They kind of look like cannoli, don't they? So it's on this one that I pressed a little hard down on it. See, I pressed it with my palm. I don't know what I was thinking, and it cracked it on the side. So I had to pick it up and kind of patch it up a bit. Now, the one thing I would do differently next time is I would keep my hands a little cleaner so that I didn't get the white icing on the outside of these. I really wanted those to remain clean. Now I thought what I could do next time is when I do these cylinders is to wrap them in parchment paper or something. That way I can work with them, fill them without worrying about getting any anything on them. Pretty good idea, right? Should have thought of it first. <laughs> So I made up another batch here, batch here, and yes, it's thick, but nothing like the last. <laughs> and by the way, I did add to this one a, a vanilla extract to just give it that little bit of oomph on top. And I realized that will cause a little bit of a discolor, but I accounted for that with some TD. But this is my second attempt at doing some piping. And I want to preface this by saying I'm terrible at piping. I have not mastered it. Does that mean that I can't? Nope, not at all. I could become the best.
best piper ever. I will someday maybe even rival Katie over royalty soaps. <laughs> no, that ain't going to happen. <laughs> but, but I do think I can improve upon it. This was only the second time. And I don't even have a good piping set. This is a disposable one because I don't do it that much, right? So I got these really cheesy, cheap ones, which maybe that's part of the problem. They don't have the best tips on them. The tip moves and stretches as you're squeezing soap through it, so they're not ideally suited for this purpose. But I did the best I could with what I had to work with. But the thing is, I don't really know the proper way to use them, so I wasn't putting good even pressure, I think, on the bag, so it kind of got a little bumpy along the way. But um, this is me doing my really ugly icing on these. Oh, and I did spray these with alcohol on top to try to help with adhesion as well, so the soap didn't just pop apart. But this is my... I think I did this one other time. Yeah, I did, but it was on a loaf soap, and it was equally as bad. <laughs> but I thought I would just get a book on the topic. I mean, I can watch videos all day long, but I think if I read some kind of... I, I We all learn differently, right? And I tend to pick things up from books, and which, by the way, I'm going to be doing some book reviews soon on soaping and uh, I hope that's something you'll enjoy it's just an idea that I've got so I'm just squeezing out the last of what was left in the pastry bag so as you can see there's not a lot of waste there but I thought I would use that just to do any touch up on the tops and I'm sorry I didn't start the camera back quick enough but I topped these with just a little bit of nutmeg and then I did a little bit of a drizzle on top with some uh, copper penny mica and some almond oil. And um, that's it. Um, again, my video is not does not give good color. I don't know why. I would love to have someone help me to get the color on this right. I keep trying, but it just looks washed out no matter what kind of lighting I use. Um, my photos come out okay, but my video is just not so hot. I think I need to get just a good smartphone like everyone else and hope that that is a better job. So, folks, thanks so much. I really appreciate you watching. Do make sure that you check out my friend Renee's website, or YouTube channel, I should say, and uh, give her a thumbs up. And me, too. <laughs> Thank you so much. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And um, for those that have already subscribed, thanks so much. Have a great day. Goodbye.